Good morning, everyone. I'm John Hudson. I'm the pastor here at Pilgrim Church, United Church of Christ at 25 South Main Street in Sherburn, Massachusetts. And for the brave and the hardy few who made it here today, I welcome them. And for those who are watching at home, hopefully nice and warm and tucked in, or uh, those who will be watching later, um, I welcome you. So was that a beautiful storm or what? Can I get an amen for that? Okay. You know, it's almost like since the pandemic, it's like we had our snow days taken away, right? But yesterday, at least for me, truly felt like a snow day. Like a day to forget all the clocks and all the schedules and maybe make some home-baked bread or read a book or watch a movie because there's not much else that you can do except look out the window, uh, the window and be in awe of God's creation. Um, it was so beautiful yesterday and this morning. It is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I got a funny um, Facebook, Facebook message from one of our former members, uh, Richard Stevenson, who was a chaplain at the Natick Army Labs, and he said down south today that they're fainting because uh, where he is, it's 42 degrees this morning. And so it's all relative, right? It's all relative. So anyways, if you're here, if you're home, wherever you are this day, as you watch this, I just hope you can feel God's presence and God's call. Um, just a couple of announcements today. Our annual meeting is next Sunday, immediately following worship. And... Um, we will be holding it virtually and in person, and items to be dis discussed include adoption of the 2022 operating budget, nomination and election of officers and committee members, and several other items. And so I encourage you to come. Uh, uh, members are, are the only ones who are allowed to vote, but members and friends are encouraged to come or to be there on Zoom. And so I welcome you here today. I also welcome one of our confirmands. Good morning, Grace. It's good to see you. Uh, we have a class of eight strong, and we're really excited about it. Um, and you don't get a snow day for confirmation, so we have class tonight at 6 o'clock on Zoom. Um, and finally, uh, no Angie today, unfortunately, uh, Johnson, but I did want you to say if you're on Facebook or you message her, wish her a happy birthday because it was her birthday yesterday. And so um, I would encourage us to turn to our left, right, back, or front, uh, wave, salute, do whatever you want to do to recognize that you are sharing this space with other people. And we will uh, move into the next part of our worship, uh, led by one of our deacons this morning, Faith Morrison. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. As John said, I'm a member of uh, Pilgrim Church, and I am one of the deacons here. And... Um, my maiden name is Morrison. My oh. married name is Carlson. So please join me in the call to worship, which is Psalm uh, 71, 1 through 6. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Be to me a rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O oh my God, from the hand of wickedness. For you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. My praise is continually of you.
Please be seated. One of the things I really enjoy about worship and church, and actually any time I connect with God, is, is the notion that um, I have the opportunity and I actually have the call to, to give over to God whatever I need to give over to God. Often that means anxiety for me, or fear, or maybe I'm thinking about someone that I'm praying for deeply, someone who's hurting or someone who's sick, maybe someone who was homeless last night and struggled through the storm. But always it's about being our whole selves and our full selves, our authentic selves with our God. No airs, you don't need to dress up, you don't need to put on your Sunday best. And so in this place, in the quiet of our hearts, I would invite you to bring to God whatever you need to bring to God. Maybe it's your brokenness, maybe it's your gratitude, maybe it's someone you're really concerned about, maybe it's the world. But in the quiet of our hearts, let's bring to our God that which we need to bring to our God. God, no matter how far we might stray, you always welcome us back. No matter how heavy the burden is that we might carry, you are always strong enough to take it away from us. No matter what the concerns of our hearts, our anxieties, or our fears, you stand ready to listen to us and to comfort us and to guide us and help us to believe in that God and to trust in that God, both as individuals and as a church. And on this day, as we come together to pray and consider each of us, our individual calls from you to lives of faithfulness, you call us to pray together in one voice as a sign of our unity in Jesus Christ, our teacher, our friend, our savior, our brother, who invites us all to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture reading is Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 through 10, and this can be found on your Pew Bible, pages 609. Now the word, the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. I said, O Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Now I have put words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up or to pull down, to destroy and to overflow, overthrow, to build and to plant. Amen. Let's be in a spirit of prayer together. Let us pray. O Creator God, slow us down this day, center us, 
Help us to listen for your voice. Yes, for wisdom and yes, for guidance, but also yes, for your call for our lives, for who you would have us be and what you would have us do with the one amazing life that you gift each of us with. Help us to listen for that call, God, and to trust in it. Amen. Again, from that text that Faith read, Now the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then Jeremiah said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. Why am I here? Why am I here, and who am I supposed to be in my one life? Friends, there may be no more universal human question, the question all of us face at one time or another, probably many times throughout life. Why are we here on earth? What are we called to do with the life that God has given us? In religious terms, a person of faith might ask, what is God calling me to do with the life that God gave to me? There are the childhood and adolescent and then young adult answers to that question, just who to be. So for me, as a boy and then a teen and then a man, I thought I was supposed to be in this order. Left fielder for the Boston Red Sox, and then I wanted to be a doctor, just like Hawkeye Pierce on my favorite television show, MASH, and then I wanted to be a filmmaker, a budding Steven Spielberg, and then I wanted to be a politician and run for public office, and then I imagined being a diplomat with the State Department, and then a journalist, and then finally a minister, which came to me when I was 25. What jobs, what calls were and are on your vocational list? Teacher, nurse, astronaut, soldier, lawyer, mother, father, boat builder, singer. But if I had to name one deep and continuous call from God in my life, one talent, one gift, one craft, one passion that's deep within me and my soul that I am sure came and still comes from God, it would be, well, I'll tell you my call story. Sophomore year of college at UMass, it was kind of a bumpy 18 months of higher education so far, the emphasis on higher, if you know what I mean. And until that second semester, I put most of my energy at school into social pursuits, but I was haunted by the question, why am I here and what am I supposed to do with my one life? And then in March of 1981, one day my cousin Kathy, who was the editorial page editor for the Collegian, our school newspaper, she said to me, you know, John, we're always looking for writers for the newspaper, folks to author columns about life or school or whatever. Send me a piece, and if it's good, I'll publish it. So that same day, Wednesday, March 4th, 1981, I sat down at my typewriter. I thought about an encounter I'd had the day before with a friend over coffee, and then I banged out a 500-word satirical essay called, Do You Think It Was Something I Said? I dropped it off to Kathy, she loved it, and on March 6th, it was published. And I became a writer. I discovered a passion within me, God-given, I believe, and I've written ever since. That's my call. That's a big part of why I am here, I believe, to write. And I thank God that for almost 41 years, I've been able to make a living in part by writing, something I absolutely love to do. So big question, have you figured out why you are here yet? Have you heard a call from God? Are you still listening and looking, perhaps? Or maybe you had a call that's changed, and now you are waiting for the next call and chapter. Call. Friends, one of my bedrock beliefs as a Christian and a human is that every single soul, every single child of God, every last one, you, me, a neighbor, a stranger, everyone, everyone has a call, a unique God-given vocation or avocation or hobby or pastime or job or role or volunteer work or pursuit that forms our essence and our core. That makes you, you, unlike anyone else. And a big part of life is to work to figure out what your call is. 
And a big part of seeing that call as God-given is to then use that gift to make God's world a better place. Maybe in a dramatic big way, maybe in a local way, maybe in a quiet way, but in some way to use your gifts to make God's creation more beautiful, more whole, better. Call, the pastor and writer Frederick Beekner gives what I think is one of the best definitions of call. He says, the place God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. Do you hear that? Call is where our deep gladness, that which brings us great joy, where this meets what the world needs. It's hunger. Call. And like I said, it does not have to be as dramatic as we sometimes imagine a call from God, right? Thunderbolts, billowing clouds, a deep, strong voice from heaven, and angels singing, and blah, blah, blah. The few and the rare folks might receive a call thus, but most of us, our call is not like the prophet Jeremiah's call that we heard in today's scripture. Some context for that story. Jeremiah was a prophet, one called to challenge the status quo for God, In this story, Jeremiah is perhaps in his late teens, and Israel is undergoing huge political and social changes, and not for the good. It is falling away from its traditional faith. It is moving away from God, and it is neglecting the needs of the poor and those who are hurting. And so God needs someone to speak up, to speak to the people, and so God calls Jeremiah to this work, and it's work that Jeremiah will do for some 40 years from 625 to 586 BCE. Now, truth, most of us will not be called in such a dramatic fashion to such a dramatic job in life. The few are, like Jeremiah, but most of us, most of us, I believe every one of us is called by our God to something, to some work, even to some relationship, but we are called to embrace what God has already given us for gifts and for talents. Friends, God's call is universal, It is egalitarian, and it is sure. And we may be called to one thing at one point in our life and then called to another thing at another point in life. But call, I think when our call comes, and it will, and it does, it most often comes not in an earthquake or so directly as to Jeremiah, but I see call as more like a whisper in our ear or a tap on the shoulder, or an opportunity that suddenly presents itself out of nowhere, or a sweet moment when life feels so good in whatever you are doing. Or call comes when you listen and you realize, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. Years ago, the singer-songwriter James Taylor, who struggled much of his life with deep depression and heroin addiction, He had a huge spiritual epiphany, a moment when he came to realize what his call was and still is, to make music and to make people happy and to bring them joy. This is what he wrote in a 1985 song. Fortune and fame, such a curious game, perfect strangers can call you by name. Pay good money to hear fire and rain again and again and again. Summer like summer, coming back every year. Got your baby, got your blanket, got your bucket of beer. I break into a grin from ear to ear, and suddenly it's perfectly clear. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. God's call, the universe's call, why you are here and why I am here, how do we know it? Well, think about this. What in your life brings you great joy, makes you happy, makes your soul sing, makes you feel wide awake, call? What as you do it makes you lose track of time, as you lose yourself in an activity, as you kind of become that activity, call? What comes to you naturally, what feels at times to be easy as breathing, call? What work, what activity, what job excites you? What makes you want to bounce out of bed in the morning and take on the day? Call. 
What is hard work but good work in the most profound sense for you? Leaves you spent, but in the best way. Call. What avocation, what pastime, what hobby, what craft, what art is deep in your soul and heart and makes you passionate and excited and always ready to just do it? Call. And from a godly view, what do you love to do that also helps repair this broken world and broken lives? that helps to spread love to others. What thing that makes your heart sing can be put to good use in God's service in large and in small ways? Call. So too, as I said, I believe call can change over the course of a life. We can realize multiple calls, not just one. We can be called at any age, at any stage in this life. And God does not accept any excuses from us when it comes to call. Not even when someone like Jeremiah says, but I am only a boy. And God said, nope, no I'm onlys in this call. I am too young, or I am too old, or I am not some clergy person, or hold some religious office, or I am not famous, or I am not ready, or I am not sure. To all of these potential protestations in the face of God's call, God simply says to Jeremiah, to us, and to all, I will be with you. I will be with you in your call, no matter what. That's why I am here. That's why I am here to write, and hopefully in writing, to help make this world a better place. That's why we are here, perhaps, to be a supportive and loving parent or to serve the poor the lost or the lonely, or to cook meals for the hungry or the sick or the recovering. That's why we are here, to love another with all of our hearts and souls, to sing to the glory of God, or to sew or knit or crochet sweaters and hats for those in need. That's why we are here, to help build houses for the homeless, to run our businesses with integrity and always taking good care of those who work for us, to run for public office and to serve the common good. That's why we are here, to ride a bike or run a marathon for charity, to teach the young and help them realize their call in life. That's why we are here. That's why you are here. Friends, no one can tell you what your call is. No, call is discovered through trial and error, through practice, through curiosity and exploration, through being open and always listening for God. Call is lived into. Call is realized, and then it changes, and a new call comes for some. Why am I here? My call. That's why I am here. That's why God made me, and that's what God made me to do. I am called, and you are called, and all are called by God. God calls all. So pray, listen, and do. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Let all God's people declare. Amen. Hmm. Uh, now is the time when we offer up prayers for ourselves and for others. But first, I wanted to ask, any of you have an idea of what your call is? And do you want to share that with us? I'm just curious. Anyone? Everyone? All at once? Faith, you always raise your hand. Caring for people, that's your call. Anyone else? Anyone in the choir feel called to sing? Yeah? Charlie, I see you called for leadership in a lot of different parts of your life. Maybe that's not what you would say your call is.
That's okay. So Charlie talks about feeling called wherever he's been to somehow, in his own way, right, to serve the common good. Although Charlie thinks he's, it's not for him to describe it, but I kind of see it in all of you too, and I see it here at the church. Um, I see it in our young people, and sometimes our job in teaching young people who come here is to is to encourage them to grow into who God wants them to be. And so I just hope this day that you hear that call is universal and it's egalitarian and it's yours and it's ours. Just listen. Listen. So now let's be in a spirit of prayer together. Is there anyone or anything that people would like to lift up in prayer this day? I want to offer a prayer of thanksgiving for all of the plow people who worked so, so hard in the last 24 to 36 hours, and the first responders. Um, I want to thank uh, governors and local politicians for good leadership. Uh, I even want to thank the weather men and women. Um, when they weren't going crazy, they actually were sharing important information with us. And I just want to thank that we can all be here together for worship this morning. Are there any other joys or concerns? Faith. Okay. So prayers for everyone who has to travel today, whose travel might have been canceled in the last couple of days for traveling mercies. Yes. What's her name? For your niece, Emma, who's deployed in the military, that she might make it home safely. Okay. Um, seeing Grace here today, I want to pray for you, Grace, and the rest of your confirmation class that we might have a good experience together over the next couple of months. I pray for all those who are caught in the storm, in particular those who are homeless and those who struggle with addictions, with drug addiction or with alcoholism or mental illness. Um, God, move them, but God, move us to take care of them as well. And prayers at home, just prayers for Rosemary as she continues to take treatment and, and try in her own way to get better and to get stabilized. And um, if there are no other prayers, I'm going to just kind of bring us into a quiet time for prayer. And so let's be in a spirit of prayer. God, help us to create enough quiet space in our lives to reach out to you and then to listen to you. Help us to see how we live out every single day, try our best to be good, to contribute to something greater than ourselves, to be forgiving, to show mercy and kindness, to be welcoming to any and all, no exceptions, in these things, God, help us to hear your call and to obey your call. And when one call is done, bring us another, God, and help us to trust that you make each and every one of us unique and for a specific task and for specific work while we are blessed to be on this earth. And so now, in the quiet places of our hearts, we offer you our prayers this day. Um, the sighs, the concerns, the thanksgivings, and the hopes. All of these things and so much more we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
And so at home, if you have not done so already, I'd encourage you to get your communion elements together. And those who are here, I'm hoping you all have your single serve communion cup. Someday we will actually be able to do communion by intinction again, but this day we're called to kind of serve together. And so always we are called to remind ourselves as, as a church we are committed to having a wide open communion table that, that God offers no qualifications to eat and to drink at this table. It doesn't matter how old or young you are. It doesn't matter who you choose to love. It doesn't matter where you live, how big your bank account is, the color of your skin. It's all irrelevant to our God who says, if you're hungry and if you're thirsty, if you want to know me more deeply, if you want to be fed, there's a chair here for you at the table. And so it's in that spirit that I welcome you here this day. And so let's be in a spirit of prayer together. Let us pray. Oh God, let your Holy Spirit descend upon these gifts, these gifts made by human hands, grape juice and bread, that as your Spirit surrounds them and infiltrates them and becomes a part of them, that they may be as your body and your blood, that they may remind us of the millions of your followers who through the years have celebrated this same ritual and we stand with them this day. They are at the table with us. And so make us holy, make us vehicles for your love in this world. Amen. And so on that night before he left the earth, Jesus took bread and he broke it saying, this, this is my body broken for you. And every time you eat from this common loaf, do so and remember me. Remember me. And then taking the cup, Jesus poured wine into it and said, this is the cup of my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins and for the reconciliation of the world unto God. And every time you drink from this cup, do so and remember me. Remember me. And so ministering to you all in the name of Jesus Christ, we offer you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. Come, eat and drink. And so we're called by God as, a, as an act of thanksgiving to give, to give thanks by giving. That's our call as well as people of faith and as Christians. And we give our time and we give our talents and we give our energy and we give our money to support God's work here and all over the world, works of peace and just, justice and hope. And love. And so it's in that spirit that we will receive this morning's offering.
Come, dear God, please accept, accept these gifts from your bounty. Help us listen for your calling, and more importantly, give us the strength to answer that call, no matter our age. Help us continue to shape why I am here. We pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Please be seated. Now, God, send us forth into the world as your people, with open hearts and with open ears, that we might hear your call, that we might heed your call, that we might do that which you call us to. Help us to be curious about that, to be open to that, and to trust in that all the days of our lives. And all this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who calls out to all the world. Let all God's people say, Amen. Yeah. 